So we're going to go on from here and we're going to talk about what happens with mutations. Still chapter 10. All right. So um, I'm going to type this part. Mutation is any change in the genetic information. So change geez, in the DNA. Okay. There's a couple of different uh, types of mutations, which I will get to now and I'll give you examples. Um, the first is something called an insertion. An insertion is where um, a nucleotide that doesn't belong in the sequence accidentally gets added to the sequence. Okay? Then we have the opposite, which is a deletion. That's where a nucleotide that does belong there gets taken out. It gets deleted. And we have a substitution. A substitution is what it sounds like. One nucleotide base gets substituted for another one, a wrong one. So let me give some examples. I'm going to lose my formatting now when I do this, but let me give you some examples of what this looks like. All right, let's say that my, I'm just going to do a sequence, a DNA sequence, okay? Let's say that my DNA sequence, I'm going to do this in codons. Let's say that this is the right sequence here. In an insertion, we get a nucleotide just thrown in someplace random where it doesn't belong. And it would look something like this. Do you notice what happened? Right here, I inserted an adenine, and it doesn't belong there. That means that my sequence now gets completely thrown off. This should have just said A A C A, but now it's A A C A. It's shifted everything down. So now I've got the A from here, here, and then the C G. Well, then it pushes the T over here, T A, and then it leaves this one hanging. A single amino acid does not code for, I'm sorry, a single nucleotide does not code for amino acid. It's junk, it's nothing. So the fact that I pushed this one in shifted my sequence down. It's kind of like adding a random word to a sentence. Um, now all of a sudden that sentence is longer and more random because we added something that shouldn't have been there. Our deletion, and I'm actually going to just use the put the mistake in the same place. So this time I'm going to, I'm going to delete the cytosine. That was really huge, you see. What happened? 
happened here is interesting. I still have my GGT, that was right. And then what happens is this should have read ACA, but I took out the C, right? So that's gonna shift it down. So I've got A and then A, and then I'm taking the C from here. We actually end up with the same sequence here, but now it's really screwed up because now what I've got left over here is just a G and a T, which starts the new codon. Taking this T, putting it here, we have a T left. Again, two nucleotides does not code for an amino acid. Okay, so we've screwed that up. Now let's do, let's do a substitution. G, G, T, I'm gonna substitute the second one right here, which is what I've been. And we're gonna switch that to a T. That's gonna be A, T, A now. And then these would stay the same because we didn't add or delete. We just substituted right here. Okay. All right. So what does this mean? I'm going to take a picture of my screen because I'm going to replicate this image for us. going to go back to our amino acid chart. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put these back up. I'm going to write my sequence. This is so much easier to do in person where I can just have all of this up at the same time. But hey, we make two, right? All right, so I have GGT. I added an A. Okay, my next one was Be patient, guys, hang in. And then my substitution. And I'll just do this in yellow. The original sequence should have been, or was, I should say, Okay, there I have our original is in yellow, the green is the insertion, the red is the deletion, the blue is the substitution. I did all this because now what I want you to be able to see is how that affects the amino acids that get placed here during the translation process. So let's do what it should have originally been, G, G, T. Uh, which would transcribe into GGU because of the T would actually be your cell. I gave us the DNA code. Every time you see a T, switch it for a U here because we're now looking at RNA. Okay, so GGU, this would have been that. This would be CGU. And this would be UAU. So this is what our amino acid code should look like, okay, for this sequence. Let's see what happens to it when I come over here and I'm working on my insertion. So I know that the first one's still gonna be the same because I didn't have any changes there. But now I've got AAC. That's an entirely different amino acid. This would be UUA also an entirely different amino acid. And then T is nothing. So we should have this sequence of amino acids, but instead only the first one is the same. 
the other two are different and the third one doesn't even exist. If this is supposed to be the sequence to build the protein to make it work, what the heck is this, right? It's not gonna build this protein, that's for dang sure. It's probably not even gonna work because it's gonna be an incomplete structure. What happens about the deletion? Again, the first one is the same. Um, coincidentally, the second one ends up being the same. Um, our third one, GUU, is entirely different. And again, we don't have a functioning fourth one. Okay, so again, our deletion is different from our original. Probably not going to function at all. What about the substitution? It's going to start out the same, but now I have a UA. And then I have CGU. And my last one is going to be the same. Okay. So looking at this, you can see kind of that our insertions and deletions are a huge deal because we're throwing off the entire sequence of our nucleotide bases, meaning we're throwing off the entire sequence of our amino acids. This means that, again, this protein that we need to function, we need to survive, is not going to be working right. And in fact, sometimes not only is it not working, sometimes it's harmful. It creates a harmful structure in the body. Substitutions are interesting because with substitutions, you really have three possible outcomes. Um, you can have something called a silent mutation. A silent mutation is a problem. It's a mutation because it's coding for the wrong amino acid, but it's still, um, I'm sorry, a silent mutation is wrong in the sense that it has the wrong nucleotide in the sequence. And yet by coincidence, that nucleotide still codes for the same amino acid. An example of this. Mm. All right, look here for like serine, S-E-R. Notice that there are four possible combinations that can code for serine. So if the original should have been UCU, right? Well, I might have a single mutation, a substitution, that's now UCA. Hey, this is a mistake? No worries, because it actually still codes for serine. That's called a silent mutation. I'll write all this down for you in a second. Okay, let's look at the next type. The next type is called a nonsense mutation. I wanna draw your attention to a couple places here on this chart. The thionine, MET, is called a start codon. The start codon is simply a sequence of three nucleotides that says, hey, start the translation process right here. After this part is the gene, so copy it after me. It's the line leader. Then we've got stop codons. There's three different um, nucleotides, three different codons that do that. UAA, UAG, and UGA. Well, those do exactly what you think. They say, you're done. You added the last amino acid to the chain, now you stop with me, okay? So they're like bookends. Thionine is start, you get all this stuff in the middle, and then you've got these three stop codons, any one of which can be used to say, you're done, no more amino acids. Well, in a nonsense mutation, what happens is a normal codon accidentally gets changed to a stop codon. Let's look at what that would look like. Um, I'm just gonna throw some random stuff in here. Okay, did you find the stop codon? 
It's right here. The problem is here, if you notice, only this much of the mRNA is going to get translated because we have a premature stop going on. It's cutting it off before any of this stuff can even be translated. So you're going to have a protein that's incomplete. These stop codons or this nonsense mutation can happen anywhere along the sequence of the gene. So you don't know, you might only get two codons in and there's a stop codon and the entire rest of the gene is left without any amino acids being added in. Okay, that's not going to be a functioning protein. Or you can have, have it come in in the middle or you can have it come in towards the end. Either way, it's going to tell the ribosome to stop adding amino acids too soon. That's a nonsense mutation. The last one is something called uh, a missense mutation. Missense mutations are interesting because they may or may not cause a problem. Basically, a missense mutation would look like this. Let's say the original should be CAU right here. What is it with my U's in this? I can't, I can't draw U's with this board. Okay, and this should have been this amino acid. But now let's say that I have this single mutation, a substitution right here. This is the mutation I end up with. Well, this codes for an entirely different amino acid. The crazy thing is, it might not make a difference. This is a missense mutation because the Amino acids are different, but depending on the type of amino acid that ends up getting put in here, it may or may not have an effect on the protein. The protein might still function totally normally, um, even though this mutation exists. Okay. Well, let me write all that down for you. I'm gonna type it out, I'm sure you can all do. And then I'll show you an example of how something that small as far as like a single codon can affect a person's health. So I already went over insertion, deletion, substitution. Right now we're going to go over the types of effects that they can have. So you can have um, silent mutation. So this was that one where we do have a substitution, but it still codes for the same amino acid. No harm, no foul. Hyper nonsense mutation. Let's say this. usually also through a substitution. But it can happen because of um, an insertion or deletion too. It just depends on where that extra codon or that extra nucleotide gets added. Uh, and then we have our mutation. Might or might not be bad. The nonsense mutation is always bad. And the silent mutation has no effect at all. Okay, so an example of this in real life. Let's talk about sickle cell disease. Also called sickle cell anemia. 
This is where a substitution mutation, a substitution Um, so sickle cell disease, basically what I said, you've got hemoglobin um, that has been assembled incorrectly because of a single mutation on a gene. Um, a substitution. Because of that, the wrong amino acid is inserted. Um, this is a missense mutation that has a negative effect. Uh, the wrong amino acid is inserted and it keeps the protein from being able to be assembled correctly. Let me show you what I mean. Go back here. Okay. First off, look here at this that I've got. This is showing you, um, it's really great. It goes from the DNA to the mRNA to the protein with the green at the bottom being the amino acids. So if you notice, um, one codon in this sequence for hemoglobin should be CTT right here. Well, we have this substitution C A T. It's a missense because it codes for a different protein or a different amino acid. Should be this one. It ends up being this one. One nucleotide and one codon changes one amino acid. And we go from having a functioning hemoglobin molecule to a non-functioning one. Having issues. Hang on, there is. All right. You don't need to worry about the words. I know it's blurry. I just want you to look at the images. At the top, that's what the normal hemoglobin should look like if all the amino acids are put in the right place. Okay. The bottom is what happens because of that one substitution. It's a mess. It looks nothing like the original protein and it keeps this from being able to hold on to oxygen because hemoglobin is the molecule that holds on to oxygen in blood cells, okay? Not only do the blood cells not carry oxygen, but they look super wonky. If I can find one of my better images here. All right, so here's one here. This is what your red blood cells should look like. Look like a shallow dish. Um, and this is what they look like when the hemoglobin molecule, the protein is normal. On the right, this is what they look like when we have the mutation with sickle cell. Notice that the full part of the red blood cell is in the shape of a sickle or like a crescent moon. That's where the name comes from. And all of that because of one nucleotide on one codon changing one amino acid. Not only does it look funny, but sickle cell uh, causes the cells to be kind of sticky and they clump together, causing clots. So it can back up or clog um, blood vessels. This is a bad thing. Sickle cell disease has treatment, but there is no cure. And even today, depending on how um, say bad the case is, uh, people still have a shortened lifespan that suffer from this, okay? So again, I keep saying it, but I, I'm really trying to drive home 
the fact that all it takes is one tiny single mistake to have these huge lasting repercussions um, on our body and on our body's functions. Okay. All right. I don't think if I need anything else. I think I've gone through what I wanted to for this. Um, I guess I do need to, to give you one more term. Talk about a mutagen. A mutagen is anything that can cause a mutation to the DNA. Okay. So I think about UV rays and um, high, um, radiation, high levels of radiation. Certain gases, things like that, can all cause changes to the DNA that cause then these issues with our proteins, okay? So if I, we're gonna tell you to study for anything for this little quiz, and for the final, frankly. Um, you would need to know the difference between DNA and RNA. You need to know the nucleotides in DNA versus RNA. You need to be able to identify just from looking at a sequence if you're looking at DNA or RNA. And the simple thing about that is you're just looking for uracil. If it has a U, you're looking at RNA. If it doesn't, you're looking at DNA. Um, be able to identify the type of mutation. So you know how I wrote out like a sequence that showed insertion, deletion, substitution. I'd like to be able to have that on the quiz or on the final and have you look at it and be like, oh, well, this was an insertion. There's been an extra nucleotide added here. Um, have you be able to match RNA codons to the amino acid chart? I'd give you an amino acid chart that you would use um, for a quiz and I'd be like, you know, UGA, what does this code on, which amino acid does it code for? And you'd tell me. Um, a little bit of, you know, the definitions. When it comes to transcription and translation, I'd want you to know which type of RNA does what. Messenger RNA is the copy of the DNA template. Our RNA makes up ribosomes and helps to assemble the amino acids tRNA actually brings in the amino acid. Um, and then the, the DNA RNA protein trait thing. All right, email me if you have questions or if this didn't make sense. I know this is kind of a lot of material, okay? All right, guys, hi, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>